Hi, my name is Anthony, and welcome to the 11th episode of the My Norse Pagan Journey podcast. Today, we have the co-hosts Cody, Luke, Puck, and Joey is back again. Thanks for coming back, Joey. I uh, didn't know if you wanted to come back after that last one, but still, anyway. Uh, so today, we are doing something a little different. We're going to do like a question and answer session uh, within the Discord server and within the, the My Norse Pagan Journey Instagram page. We did uh, ask for questions that people would have and wanted answered on the podcast. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to lead right into that. Uh, And the first question is, with the topic of death, we all know the lore behind Valhalla and hell in that sense. So the question is, what do we think about the eyewitness accounts of ghosts or spirit sightings? Do you think that it is a way that ancestors are coming back to guide the future ancestors? So whoever wants to start off, can go ahead. Yeah, I'll start off with that one. Um, there's a lot of different theories for, I guess, ghosts or spirits or entities. Um, I myself don't think I've ever had an actual like ghost experience, but I know in uh, a Practical Heathen's Guide to Asa True, okay, if you want to check it out, there is actually a uh, part where they talk about uh, the Disser, and which are basically spirits, typically female spirits, right, of ancestors that come back to kind of help and guide um, their descendants. But at the same time, there are accounts of potentially like malicious spirits, but typically they're they're more like helpful spirits. So I don't know if maybe that would kind of be like an avenue to look at. Um, and basically what they are is they're, they are part of a, basically a, a folk soul or an ancestral like lineage. So that's basically all I could really think as something that may pertain or be a mention of like a spirit. And I know we're, we're really jumping down like a, uh, it's a pretty tough question to answer to be honest. Uh, Cause we don't really see it much in the lore. We don't really see much about it, but when when we were talking about it prior to starting the podcast, uh, <clears throat> one thing that came to my mind was how they say that you want to live honorably, you know, live honorably to, like, make your ancestors happy. So maybe, like, you get that good spirit to come to you to push you forward to do what it needs to do by living honorably. I mean, I don't know. It's just a theory. Uh, but, yeah, if anybody else has anything else you want to hit on this one. Or- well, another thought that I was just thinking about is – um. They mentioned about the Valkyries coming and taking, you know, the the dead off the battlefield and things like that. But it really doesn't say that the Valkyries come and take everybody off the battlefield. So it kind of leaves you to wonder, like, it's like they pick and choose what what yeah, happened. They, yeah, they, what they, they pick the and choose, right? Yeah. So what yeah. happened? The ones did you did? die honorably, right? And it was only in a battlefield too. So yeah, or if you were killed in like a murder. Car accident, or who knows? Like, yeah, who knows? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think definitely. Um, you, you, uh, sorry, Anthony is right, though. You know, there just isn't that much information out there about it. Um, but it, it's also no secret that there was a lot of ancestral worship, and uh, I definitely feel that that worship was there because. Uh, the ancestors were always involved in our lives, in, in, in their day-to-day lives, and they they did help them in any way. They, um, through sightings and all that, sure, why not? Like, how, how can we discredit what someone has also seen as well that could just be as real as looking at us right now, right? Um, and, and like you said, there, you know, there's obviously the good and there's obviously the malicious and whatnot, right? Um but I feel overall it's generally supposed to be like a, a really good experience that is to help keep guiding you on that path that of, of, of what uh, Anthony was saying about, um, you know, living your life honorably, right, and ensuring that you live your life honorably. And I, I feel that it, it, not one of us can ever make it through this, this life here on Midgard without some kind of assistance, whether it be from the gods or whether it be from our ancestors. So. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think just to touch back on just the fact that we just 
this is all speculation and that there isn't like a ton of information. Yeah, we're just kind of giving. Yeah, that's right. Like, it, it, it's it's a great question. It, it really is, and it's a, it's a great question that really gets the, the the mind thinking a lot about the you know a lot about the afterlife and how it all ties in together, right? Like I like how this person you know says yes, we you know we 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 learn things about Valhalla and hell, but uh, how about outside of that? You know the big picture, right? So I mean, yeah, we know there's like there's a hundred other halls. You know we. We know that, mm-hmm. but like, do they stay there, you know, or are they coming back to push us along our path? You, you know, we don't know. Well, I, yeah, I remember somebody did ask the question of like, or are you just like, you go to Vala, so you're, you're stuck there forever, or are you allowed to travel between halls to see, um, relatives or ancestors, like say if you had family that was in hell where most people go <laughs> like would you be able to like go like get a pass and go like see them yeah, you gotta like put it you gotta put it in a, a long mile is, 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 isn't Valhalla supposed to be like you know the, the, the training grounds for Ragnarok wouldn't you have to apply for leave yeah I think so you, know, <laughs> you gotta like, put it in a mileage pass yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well like um uh, and uh, a theory or an idea that I've I've heard and I've kind of toyed with is uh what if these ghosts, spirits, whatever we want to call them, are entities from the other eight realms, and the reason they appear as like spectral or you know non corporeal is because they they can communicate with us on Midgard, but you know their physical form is elsewhere. Yeah. So that actually just I. Just had an epiphany, like a thought, right? Ooh. So, like, so we know Valhalla every day. All the warriors go out and they they battle, right? They they fight and they slaughter each other, and then you know are basically reborn, right? The next day, and then rinse, wash, repeat. So the thought that I just had is like how me and Anthony were talking about um, Gettysburg before we started. Maybe that's like. In Valhalla, they're experiencing the battlefields that they die on. Maybe that's what they fight, and maybe mm. it's like a maybe like a thin space, and there's still remnants of that going on. I don't know. Mm. Oof. Ghost and spiritual stuff is wow. cool. really cool. I like that. Could talk about could talk about yeah. that stuff. Hours. Yeah. I pers- I personally believe in ghosts and and I mean I've seen them so I mean it's <laughs> really almost the definition of ancestral worship and we know that back in the day and even you know what we're trying to do now is huge ancestral worship was huge I mean Halloween for example was a great time to do a whole bunch of ancestral worship um, with the set up going outside and literally sitting with your ancestors grave mounds and meditating mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You know, and we still carry those practices on today, right? Like, how many times do we go to our loved one's graves or our, or when they cremate, right? We take a part of their cremate or their ashes with us, right? We put it in a very special altar kind of like spot in the house, right? How many times do we ever find ourselves looking at her and just looking at her and just sitting there like we're sitting with them or communicating with them. So even today in, in, in modern time, that's definitely, I feel, uh, a, a still very much uh, practice. It's literally yeah, a, a form of, it's a form of ancestral, so. it's a form of ancestral worship. I mean, it's literally what we're doing. Well, those, really those, is, are, right? those are the things that never, that never truly got erased by Christianity. Like just that natural, because it is such a natural faith that like, you know, like we said, standing over someone's grave and, communicating with them or talking to them like even though you're just talking to mm-hmm. a rock and the ground like mm-hmm. i mean as far as solace out of that as far as we know every every no faith how many times you go you still feel something like for my uh my dad passed you know, uh, a long time ago but every time i go through his grave i always feel something every single yeah. yeah absolutely yeah absolutely and it's every time same thing like i mentioned before right every time i try to really reach out to my grandfather, you know, I can always just feel his presence right there, right, when I'm meditating right at my altar with his ashes always on it, right, so it's, 
it's definitely you're definitely right about that, Cody. You you always feel it with you know within you, right? Mm, always. So we good on that one? Yeah, you guys jump to the next on one? one? <laughs> Anybody else got anything else they want to add to that? That's a that's a good one. It's just once again, it's just speculation. Yeah, it's, it's all it's all theory. Yeah. 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 So. All right, so the next one we'll jump to is, and this kind of comes with, I mean, it's it's rough to say, but how do you tell your ultra-Christian parents that you are now a Norse pagan without losing them? Ooh, that's a difficult one. How do you or do you want to, I guess, is the situation with that? Because you don't have to. You literally don't have to. You can just do uh-huh. something, but if it's something that you want to do, uh... Yeah, you know what? You got you got to also do what is is right for your family dynamics. You know, um, there's you know, like if, if, honestly, if you're a minor and you're still living at home under your parents' roof, and you know they're they're feeding you, they're clothing you, they're you know they're providing you uh, with shelter. You know, I hate to say it, but my my best advice would just be if they're like super Christian like that. It, obviously, just that you don't bash them, don't hate them, love them. They, they're still your parents, but you know, respect their rules in their house, right? Don't put yourself in an unwanted situation, right? And and, and in a hostile situation or a very uncomfortable situation, right? Um, and, I, and and you know, you can always worship within yourself as well and within private, right? You can do your own solo practice as well without having to, right? When you eventually feel more comfortable and more confident as you get older, right? And as your as your life dynamics change, because our lives dynamic always change. It's never static, right? It's, it's constantly changing. It's never the same as it was yesterday, last year, or whatever, right? So, you know, f- take that time to reflect and, and just make sure that you're always in a safe spot in your life to do something like that, right? And, you know, and from there, that's the biggest call is, you're going to have to look at the dynamics <laughs> and how is it going to affect you, right? If you have a family and you want them involved and you're afraid that they might not want nothing to do with your family, you know, you, you, those, those are a lot of aspects you got to look into, right? And you, that, that one takes a really hard look and unfortunately there's no clean cut dry, here's the correct answer for you. So the best answer I could always give to the to anybody who asks that is just, you know, just be, you know, do what you feel is right, but just be safe. Being pagan doesn't mean anything if you're on the streets. Like, yeah, do, do, what, do what supports <laughs> you. Yeah. But go um, outdoors, but you know, you don't need to live outdoors like yeah. that. So been, been there, done that. Not I mean, fun. Um, I, did you have something? I couldn't have said it any better. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't have said it any better than Joey did. Uh, it just really depends on the situation and what's going on in your life. If you're worried that you might get kicked out or it might, you know, ruin a whole bunch of relationships. Hang on to it. Keep it a little bit better. There's nothing wrong with doing that because you know, in the end, family is family. If you don't want to ruin a family relationship, then, you know, hang on to it. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't come from a family particularly religious like that. I have I have some um. Whatever the fuck disconnected like family would be, that's like super religious. But you know, so no way like that's like super like in my immediate family that's like super religious. So like really, it's like for me, it's like just if you're if you're in a situation where like we said like you don't have to worry about becoming a bum because of your choice in religion or whatever, um, send it. Like be open, be honest with your family, and maybe. Don't just go like, oh, I'm Norse pagan, and then they go, well, what's that? And be like, oh, you don't understand me. Like, explain it to them. Like, show them yeah. YouTube videos or podcasts or whatever, because, because obviously some families are a little bit more compassionate towards people than others. A little right? research can go a long way, right? So I mean, absolutely. I mean, and they, and they but, want to know. I mean, I mean, it's just, I mean, the, the way I'd put it is almost the same way as like, you know, people – People come out to their families and deal with the same thing. So if you know anybody that's been through that struggle, you know, it, maybe talk to them. Like maybe they have some. I'm not not trying to compare it to that, but you know, there, there's definitely if if your family loves you, 
then they love you. If they're gonna pick, and it's shitty to say, if they're gonna, if they're gonna say they're gonna, oh, you're not, you're not Christian, you're not my child, like that's fucked up. Like <laughs> what? And, and then, like I always say, like I always said, is like Christianity. You're Christian by default. Like you're just born, and people are like, the Father, the Son, and you know, you're Christian, and. Nobody gave you a choice, and so no, maybe nobody gave them a choice. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's yeah. what they. Maybe right. They're, they're How learning. many times have we heard the term cradle, cradle Catholic" or something like that? Right. So, and it, when you hear that, they never had a choice, right? And that's what they're forced to grow up with, and so that's what they continue to go on with, right? So, well, I, mean, I think too. Sorry to cut you off there, Anthony. No, you're good. Yeah, well, I think too. Like, I mean, even for myself, I don't have like you know. A super Christian family, only like extended family and stuff like that, and it's even hard like for me to have that conversation with my parents and my sibling and stuff like that. So I mean, definitely is nothing compared to what I'm sure you're dealing with at the moment. But like, yeah, I think it's just a hard conversation to have, regardless. I mean, like your family is your family, and and it's hard to have like these conversations. And, dude, this question, on top of everything else that's happened to me over the last couple of days, someone's trying to tell me something. <laughs> yeah, they are. From what you've oh, told between me. Between that. Yeah, exactly what you're talking about, too. Yeah, you dude. Not to get into it if you don't want to, but I, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I, I've just had a couple of experiences where, it, where I, I think someone out there is trying to tell me to have that conversation with my family because there's been a few things that have, that have happened like over the last few days. And it's all been like related to me having or not having that conversation, and I'm like, the gods, damn it! Like, <laughs> you know what? It, you're yeah. It could just be somebody's trying to push you, nudge you, right? But, uh, yeah, just make sure that you find that right time for you, right? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I don't like, know, I don't know. oh sorry. No, you're good, man. But like when I when I did when I like came out, right? Um, to tell my family, I mean, I told my wife she was cool with it, but like my mom, she was kind of, she was cool with it, but like she didn't understand it. That was the biggest thing. Like what you were saying, Puck, she didn't understand it. She's seen the Vikings TV mm-hmm. show and that's what she thought. She was like, okay, so don't go buying a fucking goat to sacrifice. Like that's weird. And I was like, okay. And she's like, and she also told me don't go sacrificing, sacrificing Athelstan. And I was like, don't worry. I know you, he was like one of your favorite characters. You get. But, so like what I did then was, this is all while I was in Germany, right? So when I came home, uh, I have a book and it's a very, very simple book. And it's called The Soul of the North. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it or heard of it. It's a very simple, it's like a 20 page read, maybe like, maybe like 20 to 50 page read, super small, super simple, but it goes into very minor detail of what Norse paganism is. And, uh, I gave her that book. I said, here, read this. I said, if you really truly want to know what it is that I do, read this. And she did. And now she kind of understands. So like I got past that hump with her, you know, and the only other person that doesn't know directly from me is my grandmother because she is super Catholic. Like that, that woman, if she doesn't, if she doesn't attend mass, she watches it on TV. So she doesn't have to go to confession, like that kind of thing. Right. So like she saw it, she saw it. Cause I, I had a Facebook post about something about being Norse pagan and I just put it out there and she liked it and we've seen each other since and she hasn't said anything. I haven't said anything. So we just kind of keep it at that, you know, but like everybody else, they're like, dude, I don't care. Like, I have family members and it's weird because like one of them's super Catholic, but she is on the, uh, my North Spain journey Facebook page and she like likes every single thing I put on there and it's weird, but yeah, like, well, that, but know, like, that's awesome. but it, but that's it, awesome. like you that fear, it's like that, that fear. That, uh, I speak louder than words, yeah. Right? And it's that fear, like that little bit of fear that I had, like, you know, and she's like, I'm really close with this aunt. And like, I had a fear that, you know, oh, she's going to see it. What, how the hell did she even find it? First of all, I don't know. But like she found it and she, she likes everything I post now. My dad does the same thing. So it's like, I was nervous, but then at the same time, when it actually came out, it was like, here I am. Yeah. Well, and it is, yeah. that bit of, it is that little bit of fear thing too. Like, cause you know, they, you know, especially when it's your immediate family, like mom, dad, siblings and things like that, you're, you're kind of like nervous, afraid of what they're going to think. But I think it was you, Cody, who said like, well, maybe you don't have to like have this big like conversation with them 
uh, he was saying, like, maybe just, like, start, like, sharing your social media posts, like, publicly, and then just, like, having those conversations and addressing those things, like, as they come up. Yeah. And that's what I did. Yeah. That's what I did with my old man. That's literally what I did. I no, literally I, did I, that to him. Another thing I told somebody in the Discord, and we had somebody in the Discord that was like, and you hear a lot of people that talk about like, oh, well, you know, people ask me about religion or whatever, or like, you know, like not everybody has to know. Like, I don't, it seems like nowadays everybody wants to tell everything about themselves. And it's like, well, it doesn't, <laughs> being Norse pagan doesn't matter what the, it's not about what the Christians know or the Christians think or everybody knows everything about you because guess what? You being Norse pagan literally does not affect their lives. No. If, it it you, if, if, it, if, if, if the closest people to you know it and accept it, like, great. But guess what? I can walk into a building. I wear a Mjolnir every day underneath my uniform in the Army. Nobody fucking knows. Like, nobody knows. I'm still just as Norse pagan yeah. from the time I get to work to the time I get out of work. Like, I just, they don't need to know. So... If you feel that they need mm-hmm. to know, or you want them to know, and you want them to accept it, like, best of luck. But as long as in yourself you know that you're what you are, and you're doing what you do, and you connect to the, the, your ancestors, the gods, like, then you're kosher, you're copacetic. I mean, that was the same thing for me when I was in the army, man. Like, I wore it underneath every day, right? And then if somebody asked, I'd tell them. But mm-hmm. I wasn't going out of my way to be like, hey, what's up, dog? I'm a fucking pagan. Well, I mean, <laughs> prime example. Guess what I am. Guess what I do. Prime example. <laughs> I don't got a beard. Yeah. I don't got a beard. But you see these dudes that are like trying to get beards. They're like, oh, I'm Norris Payne. I'm Norris Payne. And you just hit them with a couple of real simple questions. And they're like, they no, I don't know what that is. And you're like, yeah, because you just want a fucking beard. Like, you're <laughs> bastardizing your religion. Like. All right, I'm going to cut us off on this one because if we don't cut off, we're yep. going to keep rambling about things. <laughs> so this one I know is going to trigger everybody. Um, <laughs> after, after learning, practicing, and understanding, I'm reading this verbatim, so don't don't take this out of context. Anybody that's listening well, to this. I want to get started. Started. <laughs> After learning, practicing, and understanding almost everything of our faith, what is the next step? You don't know everything. You die. You, what? No. How do you know everything? This is a lifelong journey. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm this sorry. This is a lifelong Do journey. You're gonna, you're, always always learn. you're gonna um this might like upset some people or like the person who, who wrote this question and I, and I don't wanna sound like I'm being an asshole, but you don't know everything and you probably will never know everything. Here's the question. Do you know this one? Do you know if what shoes is Odin wearing? Is he wearing Jordan 6s or is he wearing freaking Nike Cortez? Dog? Yeah, like, tell me. Yeah, what, yeah, what size is he? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I think that one's, that yeah, one's yeah, easy you enough. Know what, you, you, uh, you might have read a lot and done a lot of research and all that stuff. And you, you know what, though? Odin doesn't even know everything. Right? Because he's always seeking knowledge. If he knew everything, he wouldn't be out there seeking knowledge, right? So uh, the way I see it, yeah, I, I don't mean to be an asshole either, but so if you really want to, if you know everything, if you really think that you know everything, dive deeper into the lore, like dive mm-hmm. deeper into the sagas. When I think people say that, oh, what happens when I? Figured everything out. Yeah, exactly like everyone has already been saying. You're not doing enough. To me, what it's saying is you're bored. You want to move on to something else because you know you, that's that's the end of your little high, your high and mighty little espionage that you've gone through. It's, it's always gonna. There's so much out there that you can go. With. How many people do we have in the Discord? Just the Discord alone that are like, oh, I'm to the pagan for 20, 30 years. And they're just strictly pagan. I don't know how many other people that are around my age that are like, oh yeah, I started out as Norse pagan, and then I dabbled into Wiccan, and then I dabbled into witchcraft, and then I dabbled into Greeks, and everything. Just, just everything. And then, but to me, what that says is that they got bored. When there's so much out there. There's so much that you can just pick up, that you can learn, you can dive down these deep rabbit holes, pick up as much as you can, instead of just 
skimming across the top there. Like, okay, that's complete. On to the next. It's if this is truly the religion that you want to go into, then you will never run out of information run out of knowledge to bring it. And I, I so, mean, <clears throat> it's, it's crazy because like I've done so much research. I mean, I've thought about it the other day, like. I mean, all the YouTube videos that I've ever made, I've had to do extensive research into all of them, right? Because I don't want to give bad data. I don't want to do the wrong thing. I don't want to do all that. I want to, you know, give good data. I've done so much research, and there is still so much more to learn. Like, so you're telling me that you know everything about every single god and goddess. You're telling me that you could go and tell me right now, if I pulled a random name out of the hat, okay, a gear and Ryan, yeah. how are you gonna how are you gonna worship them? What are you gonna do? What's your what's your very first thing you're gonna give as an offering? How are you gonna actually talk to them? Like what's gonna happen? You're gonna do it while you're not by the sea? Okay, what come on, you know what I mean? Like there's so much. Yeah. Tell me about Hoda. Have a conversation with me about Hoda. Video come on the Oh, this is a perfect time. This is a perfect time to uh, to drop in because he just said he's making a video about Hodor. Uh, everybody needs to go and follow Luke on TikTok. <laughs> Blind Dollar. Uh, they're going to write sagas about this man. All right, Buck, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, shucks. Oh, absolutely. So I want to add more. There's more than I want to add. You know, there are some people out there that will dabble a little bit into like the Catholic side of things or anything like that to get more in touch with like the heritage. I feel like that's fine. Or I have issues with when people start going in and start like, they're like, oh yeah, I also worship uh, the Christian demons, or I worship um, vampires. Oh, or, vampires. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, vampires, <laughs> yeah. Like that. It's like, no. That's yeah, 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 yeah. You know. So, yeah, that, that's the other little tidbit that I have. Yeah, you know what, uh, though? Let me now. say something. Okay. Say it, Pop. I want to hear so, your voice. What I was going to say is if you feel that you know absolutely everything, then your next step should be to go back from where you started and start reading everything again and studying everything again because now the more you know, the different your perspective will be. The second, It's like when you watch a movie and then you watch it again and you notice like things that you didn't see before or you understand it in a different light. Or, if somehow you know everything, go teach people. Write a book. Go share your wealth of knowledge. Write a book. I mean, mm-hmm. Yeah, call me. You know what, I swear, I, you just you just took all of that, what you just said, you just sucked it out of my head. That was That's what the point is I was going to go. Absolutely. I learned well, it. Well, you guys go, go reread it. I yeah. guarantee your perception will be will be different. You'll be like, oh my God, I never saw it that way. I mean, and we it, can it, 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 everything that's from everything that's from the mythology, too. We can go and look at the history, the history, history. Archaeologists are out there discovering stuff every single year, new things. It's they're literally discovering new rooms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they just found a new room like a year ago. Yeah, it's people like, literally dedicate their lives to just the study of it. Guy yeah, Steve Crawford is a perfect example. That's all he does. And remember that last video that came out when they found something out in, um, over in Europe? And he was. He, Put a video out, and he was so excited about it. You could tell his monotone voice. He was so excited. You could just I'm just going to tell you, if, if, if I talk to anybody that tells me that they know everything there is to know, I'm just going to be like, mm-hmm, yep, all right, whatever. Like, I'm not, I'm not no, no way. No way. <laughs> yeah. Enlighten, you're, you're, Enlighten me. You're crazy. Again. <laughs> Again, we don't want to, we don't want to, like, sound like assholes and, like, we're trying to, like, berate you or something, but... Yeah, it's just like, you don't... I'm sorry, man, you don't know anything. Well, man... There's... there's, Well, no, it's not that they don't know anything, but it... Never... Everything. But you need to maintain a a presence of humbleness. You know what I mean? Like, don't ever assume that, like, you know more than anybody. Because, like we always say, you know, the biggest thing that I always say, like, when I speak to new people, is like, yeah, hey, I'd love to hear, like, your perspective on things, because just because if it was just you locked down in COVID, studying Norse paganism by yourself, 
the way you read and perceive things is going to be based off a plethora of different things that your your own bias, your own opinions, right? It's all going to be different the way you read it. But now if I talk to any of you guys and I say, oh, well, you know, this is how I perceive it, well, you all might come at me with a different objective and be like, oh, well, I never thought of it that way. And then I'm like, I like that. Or I like that. Like, we learn from each other because that's why in North Spain is like community and, you know, networking is such a big thing because we're we don't have a lot to go off of. we don't have all these bibles and everything we just have whatever the hell is left over or written by christians. even christians like mm -hmm. <laughs> all right on to the next one <laughs> next time next time <laughs> yeah, next next one. Let's get this one. All right. that was craziness <laughs> some that one some that one all up just like that. that one was a roller coaster ride for sure oh, cody cody Go yeah. go. Just like just like Puck said, if you think you got it all figured out, just do it all. Again. Start over. Start over. Something else up. Mm -hmm. All right. Next one. Is it a bad thing to get the runes in a tattoo? Real quick, we're just gonna hit on it real fast. Um, no, as long as, long as no, as long as you know what the rune is and the meaning behind it. Not and you've read the you rune channel. Cool. Yeah, yeah. If you're just getting it because you think it looks cool, maybe not. But if you, you know, if it means something to you, or like even at least if you know the meaning of the runes, then like it's cool. Like I know plenty of people who have uh, tattoos on the runes, Anthony included. Yeah, there you go. Mine literally. I, mine I, literally I, says. I, I've I've got the Thor rune on my arm. Probably can't I'd see say, that. I'd say even if you get it just because it looks cool. Then get it because it looks cool. Don't try to associate any type of um, meaning or power to it because now you're stuck with something that you're. Because, like we always say, it's in, especially with bind runes, is intention. What was your intention? And if you if you have a meaning or an intent for it, and then it comes out and it's fucking wrong, or it just makes no sense. Now you've got this shit on your body forever. That's just craziness. Exactly. And then bind runes themselves, I mean, yeah, they can get very personal to you, but when it comes to combining those bind runes, if you're into the magic and the powers of the runes, you are dabbling with some serious, serious shit right there. Just, the runes just by themselves, again, if you believe in that kind of stuff, which I personally do, um, are very powerful, but once you start combining them, they get the it's it can be some gnarly stuff. You definitely have to understand them, really understand them, and if that takes it a lot of time. To do. Well, and any, anything you study with the bind runes and things like that is a lot of that that magic, that rune magic or that rune work. It's only supposed to be known to the person that's intending to use it. So it's not supposed to be like fucking. Hey, I'm gonna get this bind rune tattoo on my face. Everybody's gonna see it, like Bjorn Ironside, and everybody's gonna know. Like, so you know, just know your stuff, or find that guy that knows everything there is to know about Norse paganism and ask him. <laughs> yeah, he'll be able to tell you. <laughs> and I mean, that's, that's that's what I was gonna hit on because I do have runes as a tattoo, right? We all just saw them, and yeah. mine literally, I got it as. An oath ring. We all talked about that before, because I had the oath ring. It was scratching my kid and everything. Blah blah blah. So mine is meaningful to me for that. That's why I have it, you know. And then the middle yeah. piece, the middle piece is a bind rune, but it's for my son. So it's nothing like mm -hmm. it's nothing crazy. I did some research, you know. I had somebody help me draw it because I can't draw worth a fucking shit, and that was it. And then I got it done. And you know, like <clears throat> it was pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, like the the process of getting it done because it was like an offering in itself. Uh, getting yeah. The tattoo, oh, yeah, definitely. Getting, getting the runes mm -hmm. tattooed on me and stuff—it it was definitely like an offering within itself. Uh, so, does anybody else want to talk about this one? We can we can go to the next one. I think yeah, you know what? You guys hit all the points all for right. sure. So, so I'm good. The next one, I think we should all just go around the circle because if we don't, we're going to talk about this one for like five hours. All right. Oh boy, Ragnarok. 
Oh boy. The question That's is a good movie. <laughs> we all have our own opinions <laughs> on Ragnarok. Has it Should happened or not, right? At the end of everything we, we, know the, like... we know the Asir are gone. Now I know some of you have had experience with certain members of the Asir. So wouldn't that mean that it hasn't happened yet? Question mark. Okay, so I think we should go like <laughs> a minute a piece. Otherwise, like like Anthony said, we're gonna like. All right, go here. Into I'll, hours. Get, I'll get the timer out. Go ahead. Somebody can start. Yeah. Um. So I personally think, um, that Ragnarok hasn't happened yet. Um, just because, um, like it was said in the question. There are a lot of people who worship gods that are supposed to have either died before Ragnarok or during Ragnarok. Um, shall I go into our crazy Ragnarok theory, Puck? Yeah. Okay, so another theory that we've discussed on the Discord is that uh, there is a forest of Yggdrasils and that uh, that forest of Yggdrasil is the multiverse, and that every time Ragnarok happens, so the world tree gets burnt down, and you know stuff like that. Whenever Ragnarok happens, it resets on another tree in the forest of Yggdrasils. Which would play into the the theory of Tyr originally being the high one, and then Odin Ooh. becoming the high one. Ooh. Everybody gets a chance because, yeah. but but at the same time, like I've all, I've always wondered about this one because there's people that say, um, you know, Ragnarok already happened, Ragnarok hasn't happened, but they still worship and you know offer to the same gods. But if if you took into the concept that Ragnarok had already happened, then you would essentially, I mean, wouldn't Balder be like the new? Head dude, Balder and Hoda rule mm -hmm. together in um, as the two sons of Odin. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you have uh, what's his name, Magni and I Magni and Modi. They yeah, they really both sons, wield yeah. they both wield Mjolnir. Yeah, so I mean that's what they say. Yeah. So, anyway, who wants to go next? Or does anybody else want to add anything to it? Because I mean. I mean, you know, that one's, that, one's in, that one's in depth. Personally, I've always looked at Ragnarok not to, it's happened, and it hasn't happened. It, 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 it's cyclical, right? It's, it, it's continuously happening as the world, all, as, as our world is always changing, um, as our lives always changing. And when I mean the world changing, I know I'm not talking about, you know, the, sea, the four seasons. I'm talking about... You know, things from massive world wars to how, you know, different religions have different uh, different uh, influences and during different times. Uh, I, I think that Ragnarok is, is more of a cyclical event, um, which also really kind of has expanded my mind more on that with that whole multiverse idea. Maybe we're all living in the multiverse. Who knows? My, my mind was kind of blown with that. Uh, yeah. Well, so you definitely uh, threw that one, uh, threw that one. I mean, that's the first time I'm hearing about it. And I, uh, I really like it too. But uh, personally, I've always thought as Ragnarok to be more uh, cyclical. So yeah, definitely. I, I, I do. Same as Joey. Is I, I, I have had the thought of the cyclical kind of cycles, similar to if you look into Hinduism and they talk about the yugas, which are essentially roundabouts, four hundred fifty thousand to five hundred thousand year cycles that the world goes through, and it's just this continual cycle between creation, like kind of prosperity, mm -hmm. um, devastation into devastation and then repeat it's it's four cycles but so you would look at a million year cycle right like so i mean i don't know but i, I do like to look at it in like a, a a cyclical kind of pattern and and this is the thing where i think nobody knows nobody knows for sure because once again like we're all alive <laughs> where's where is the like <laughs> we're all alive we're all here <laughs> like so I don't know. No, I, 
I think well, about it the same, the, actually the, the same way I think about it in cycles. I feel like it's happened. Ragnarok has probably happened multiple times, and in mm-hmm. our time period, in our time era, we haven't reached it yet. So and the reason I think that is because there is some archaeological evidence of the possibility of like an ancient human society that had their whole, you know, their all different sorts of technology and endeavors and all that good stuff way, way back for everything. So that, to me, that brings up the possibility of cycles, you know. Ragnarok happened for them, and then everything reset, and then now we're going through the process again. Because, in the, again, with cycles, everything works off the cycles. Everything. Yeah. The entire yes. world, our life, you know, the seasons. Even, even, even the way the planets, you know, revolve around the sun, it's all cyclical, right? So, uh, it's, yeah, that's, uh, I think I'm on the exact same page as you there. Yeah, very true. Also, Cody, don't get me started on ancient civilizations. Yeah. You know so I could <laughs> keep diving on that. To answer the question, to answer the question, um, whatever you choose is your opinion. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I'm gonna be the oddball. I I want to believe the lore, right? That, I mean, we read it, we want to believe it. So I don't think it happened yet. I've seen Odin. He's been here. He's here. He hasn't. He, you know. It, Max. That, that, that's the way I think about it. I mean, and like I said, it. I want to believe the lore, but hearing different theories, hearing different things, makes it hard to believe one certain thing. You know, part of me wants to say, yeah, it is cyclical. Then the other part of me is like the the like the uh, the stick your ground part of me is like nah man it's never happened you know it it, it is what it is I mean we all have our own opinions on well, it and and that's the thing like like I said like I don't I don't think it's happened but In I also life, I also I also prescribe to the there's the potential it could be cyclical like and, and that's the thing that's that's why i talked about like you need to speak to other pagans and like it's okay if if somebody else has a different opinion than you like it is okay like unless they're like yeah hey uh you need to do something illegal to be a pagan like then that's not okay but no i mean the thing is as long as they can back it up with facts or like something like a substantial evidence like like you guys just said, there's the multiverse with all these different things, and when one thing happens, it happens to this. Like, if if I was, say, talking to someone, they were like, yes, it's already happened, and it's never going to happen again. Not cyclical at all, never going to happen again. Yeah. I'd want to know why they think that. You know, have a have a, have a, mm-hmm. a, a backstory to it. You know, for me, mine is the lore. The lore says that it's going to happen, so that's what I believe. You know, have a backstory to it. Go on with it there. Absolutely. We all good on Ragnarok. <laughs> I knew it was gonna open yeah. a can of worms. So uh, I right, think right one. now we yeah we're good. Can Did we can I lead? Whole... Can I lead? Can I lead into another question that may not have been posed by? Yeah, absolutely. Um, anybody? Yeah. To go along with Ragnarok, okay. There is a large amount of people that ask for resources or information about Finrir. <laughs> Almost in the capacity of a deity or somebody to make offerings to or to make as their patron um, wolf. <laughs> like, we just had this conversation um, the other day. <laughs> and this is the one that gets me because literally when people ask me this question, I'm like, like yeah, hey, uh, you got any books on Because, you know, I'd be pillaging them libraries and stuff. I'd be finding them books, the ancient texts. That's my thing. Um, And people go, hey, can you find me a book about Fenrir? And I'm like, well, you know, if you read the Eddas, it's about this big that covers, like, this much time, right? Where do you all stand on that as far as, like, Fenrir as, like, a, a patron deity? So I I don't really consider him like an a deity or anything like that that you that you can worship. However, I do see how people do see it. Like I, I know, like a lot of people 
I guess, sympathize with his story, and they have that whole, what could have been if Odin didn't, um, you know, chain him up, obviously, like, I think in that way, I mean, I'm more on the, I am more on the side of Odin, um, but I do think, in a way, Odin was the architect of his own downfall in that situation, right, he, he saw his... He found out his future that he was going to get killed by a wolf, and he sees this this big, huge wolf come into Asgard, and he maybe makes a bad judgment call. That's up for debate. I, you know, personally don't think he did make a bad judgment call. I think it was the right move. Um, chains up Fenrir, and then you know, because Fenrir feels like he has been betrayed in a way, he becomes an enemy of the gods. Um, because I know, at least in uh, Norse mythology by Neil Gaiman, um, there's a line from Fenrir who says, Odin, you are a fool. I would have been friend to the gods. Mm-hmm. Now, whether you think he was being truthful in that scenario or whether he was just like saying it to say it is up for the bait. But um, yeah, personally, I don't think that Fenrir could be worshipped, but I do see the point of view from people who do worship Fenrir. Well, I mean, when we think about things like fate and, you know, the Norns, is like, like you said, like Fenrir said, oh, I would have been your friend. Like, well, would you have been? Like, I mean. Well, here's here's my thing. Right? Things are, here's my thing. I'm an Odin guy, so we all know my take on this. Uh, you know, he did it. It's, absolutely. It's, it is what it is. My thing is, put yourself in Odin's shoes, right? <clears throat> you get told that this big-ass wolf is going to kill you in Ragnarok. He's going to eat you. Wouldn't you do the same thing that he did? I mean, yeah. wouldn't well, you? Yeah. you see yeah. it, like Luke said, you see this big-ass wolf just trotting into, yeah. into Asgard. But, so, yeah. but to, go, to, to go back to the thing of, like, I guess the thing is I see a lot of people, and they're kind of, once again, kind of reflecting their own feelings or their own insights into, oh, look, Fenrir is this person, or not person, but this um, entity that's been, you know, shunned and shackled and all this stuff. But then I asked, like, okay, well, all right, well, Fenrir, I guess you have a little more equity. Then you would have, like, okay, Jormungandr? Like, are you going to give the same input to a snake that was just chucked in the ocean? Right? Um, I don't know. I guess on my side, I don't. I don't see it. I don't see it as like I would never make an offering to Fenrir, um, as opposed to like Hell, who Hell is actually she's kind of in decent. charge of a realm and yeah, yeah is is a god. Yeah, essentially. like so, like my thing is 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 you ask that question. So why? And you can if you want. Do what you want to do. It's your own path. It's your own journey, right? But. Why give an offering to someone that is inevitably the demise of the gods, the end of the world? Like, why give an offering to them? You know, like, that's like, I don't know. Why would you do it? That's that's the way I look at it. It's it's like the taboo thought on, like, Loki. There's people that are like, hell no, like, no Loki. Like, I ain't about that because Loki betrayed the gods or anything like that. And then you have people that are like, Except, like, like, I've had a Loki experience, without a doubt. And you know what? And I was always somebody that was like, I don't I don't subscribe to Loki. And then I had a day where I was like, it, just, it couldn't be anybody fucking else. But then you're going to go beyond that. You're going to go another level beyond that. I don't know. It, it's just, it's a question that's been brought up. And to me, every time I get it, I'm just kind of like, Stumped as to how to approach it with a a tactful response. <sighs> well, I'm just saying, like, where's the love of sleep, Neil? Everyone's everyone's out here worshiping Fenrir and Hell, and you know some people also worship Yumungandr, which is a bit weird. But like, hey, what about sleep, Neil? I mean, <laughs> he's got to carry Odin around. A he's got to ch- carry Odin around. <laughs> A child you know, of Loki, right? Child of Loki, so... Oh, yeah, child, child of Loki. Everyone, <laughs> everyone forgets sleep. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. That's yeah. great. So anyway, 
Not Dude, she gets all the nine rounds. Like, <laughs> all right. All right. Well, anyways, yeah. I'll get me to fifteen hundred K. That was really just something that I've seen a lot of questions about. Just want to bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. My two cents. My two cents on it, real quick, is that uh, I I get that people need feel the need to reach out to Pandora. I don't truly really understand it, and I'm I like Loki. So if I don't understand it, then there's there's a little weird there. Anyway, um, if you want to do it, I feel like it's one of those things where you gotta kind of be, you gotta be this tall on the take and knowledge scale in order to fucking ride the ride. Not this tall, kind of a thing. You gotta, you gotta be ready. Because well, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta actually. Wild ride. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta study the actual lore and the faith, and not just go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm emo too, and I'm just gonna be this tied up wolf that wants to get loose and shoot up the school well, or some shit. Well, my like, thing is, my thing is, is like, you know, Lou, or Puck, you said, well, why, you know, you just want to worship somebody that's like tied up, you know, was shunned, stuff like that. I mean, there's other, there's other deities. I mean, look at Balder. Balder gets stuck in hell and he can't get out. Like. Why yeah, not, why yeah, not right. go that route? I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. But anyway, but my thing is, is like, if you look into a deity, right? If you feel that you're oppressed, why focus on your oppression? Why not focus on somebody that is going to pull you great, from that or pull you powerful. away from that oppression? Look, look for, look you for power. On Balzer. I mean, anybody. It's like. Just why, 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 when you think about, it's like, oh, he broke loose and he killed Odin, and then, and then what? And then he died. Instead of, like, focusing on, like, something powerful, like, empower yourself, find your power, because Norse paganism isn't about being a submissive, you know, just, like, uh, get walked on and mud kicked on you, like, make your own path, forge your own path, be powerful in yourself, don't be an asshole, but you know what? Make a life for yourself. Make a path for yourself. Be great. Get the attention of the gods. You're right. <laughs> I, I like that. But we're hitting the hour mark, fellas. Mm. Already? Oh, yeah. Damn. It's been just about an hour. Damn, so, that was quick. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, we got to close this one out. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit that little part out, but anyway. Can we make this one two hours? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we only have one more question. It's friggin' Freya, which, I mean. Yeah. That's quick. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I have I have a theory. Well, if you want to hear it. Yeah. All right, I, I think I, I have a theory, too, but I'm going to let Puck go before me because I think ask, it might be ask, the same Ask the question, Anthony. Are friggin' Freya the same deity? So my theory is, and, you know, I used to say, no, they're not the same deity. And I still kind of beat around, no, they're not the same deity. But then I started thinking, when you think of Freya, and you think of the attributes of Freya, right, I almost think of Freya as Freya in the younger years, right? I think of, when you think about womanhood, Right, when you think about before and after children. And that's where I see Freya is almost the embodiment of womanhood as a young woman. And then Frigg as the maternal instinct or the maternal being of motherly, wifely, things like that. So I was going to say the same thing. I see it both ways. So I mean, it, I, don't I like know. To see them separate. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I I see it both I, ways too. But I, I I go with that they're 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 too separate. You know, I do, um, I, I do as well because um, especially if you look at some of the sagas, they're in like the same scene together. So it's like exactly right. So. <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah, I, but, I don't but, know. I, I look at it like that, and, and and I like how you have, how you said like they have um, similar attributes, right? 
Well, you know, I, I'm sure with it through enough discussion, we can all find similar attributes. One being that we're all Norse pagan, right? There's a similar attribute right there, right? You can share similar attributes with so many other people. That doesn't make, necessarily make you that person, yeah, right? They also show very distinct um, differences in their personalities, right? Which also separates them as two different as well, right? And um, the way I like to look at it is, well, we've also known Odin to be very cunning and to be a trickster. And we also know Loki to be, you know, a trickster and very cunning. So, and both of them are wise within their own rights. So are you going to argue that, are they the same? But no, people automatically go, no, they're different, right? So uh, that's that's how I look at it, as Frigg and Freya are two separate deities. Cool. I would like to see, like, I do like the, the story in here, and, like, you know, yeah, they are the same, you know, uh, and with a lot like what you just said there, Puck. Um, but uh, uh, for me, I'll always stick with that. They're two separate deities. Well, and, we, and we know that Freya is of the Venier and that Frigg is of the Aesir. So it's like... Exactly. I don't know. Like I said, as far as me, I just see it as representations of the progression through womanhood. Like, mm -hmm. one represents, you know, young woman, and the other one represents a mother. Well, there we go. Very well said. Anybody else got anything else for this last question? No. Nah. Yeah? I like to say that nah. I think they are. Nah. I, like, I like to say that I think they're, they're separate as well. Yeah. All right. The more gods, the better. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stack them up. <laughs> yeah. Overload. But well, anyways, that's our last question. So there we go. We, we made it in time, them. right on time. That was a bit of a workout. I'm yeah. Like, well, oh, yeah. I had to really had to really yeah, yeah, rattle the old brain on that one. Right. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll sit in on the hot seat here. Yeah. So anyway, I'll lead us out then. Well, that's all the time we have for today, guys. So thank you for listening to the 11th episode of the Minor Spain Journey podcast. Uh, once again, if you guys have any questions that you guys want to know or have want us to dive deeper into, uh, we're not going to do all the work for you, but we will help you lead you in the right direction. Get a hold of us. I know Joey's making an Instagram as we speak just for this, literally for this. So... Uh, yeah, we drug him back into the social media world. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so if you guys have any any questions, go ahead and let us know. Uh, but with that being said, that's that's all the time we have. So my name is Anthony. That's Luke. That's Cody. That's Puck. And that's Joey. And this is our journey. Journey. Someday we'll get it. One day. <laughs>